Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer on Wednesday, the 1st of September. You join me here in the uh, churchyard at uh, St. Uh, Wilfrid's in Carverley. Last night, our new vicar, Rob Denton, um, had his licensing service here at the church. Um, and uh, so this marks his first day on the job. Um, sadly, I wasn't able to attend the this, this service. So I really uh, would like to take this opportunity to welcome Rob and his uh, family, his uh, wife, Victoria, his daughter, Amelia, to the church. It's going to be a really exciting uh, time uh, for the church as we, um, as we journey with him. Uh, and it's just great to have him uh, here in, in situ. So um, on that note, let us begin. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we awake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, our God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So, our psalm today, Psalm 119, this is going to be taken from verse 153 through to the end. O oh, consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my case and redeem me according to your promise. Give me life. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord. Many there are that persecute and oppress me, yet do I not swerve from your testimonies. It grieves me when I see the treacherous, for they do not keep your word. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth and all your righteousness, judgments endure for evermore. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord. Princes have persecuted me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad of your word as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, for your law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord. Great peace of they who love your law, nothing shall make them stumble. Lord, I have looked for your salvation, and I have fulfilled your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies, and greatly have I loved them. I have kept your commandments and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you have taught me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord. Let your hand reach out to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise you. Let your judgments be my help. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. I will seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. God of mercy, swift to help us as our lips pour forth your praise, fill our hearts with the peace you give to those who wait for for your salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now our scripture reading today uh, is from the book of Proverbs. Uh, we're in chapter 26. Do you see persons wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for fools than for them. 
The lazy person says, there is a lion in the road, there is a lion in the street. As a door turns on, it, on its hinges, so does a lazy person in bed. The lazy person buries a hand in the dish and is too tired to bring it back to their mouth. The lazy person is wiser in self-esteem than seven who can answer discreetly. Like somebody who takes a passing dog by the ear is one who meddles in the quarrels of another. Like a maniac who shoots deadly firebrands and arrows, so is one who deceives a neighbour and says, I'm only joking. For lack of wood, the fire goes out, and where, where there is no whisperer, quarrelling ceases. As charcoal is hot embers and wood to fire, so is a quarrelsome person for kindling strife. The words of a whisperer are like a delicious morsel. They go down in the inner parts of the body. Like the glaze covering an earthly earthen vessel are smooth lips with an evil heart. An enemy dissembles in speaking while harbouring deceit within. When an enemy speaks graciously, do not believe it, for there are seven ab abominations concealed within. Though hatred is covered with guile, the enemy's wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and a stone will come back on the one who starts it rolling. A lying tongue hates its victims, and a flattering mouth works ruins. Apparently Bill Gates once said, uh, I, I choose a lazy person to do a hard job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. And I assume that was probably said in jest, really, because I think probably the easy way of doing things is not necessarily always the best. This part of the book of Proverbs is often attributed to uh, King Solomon, who was edited by the royal scribes during the reign of uh, Ezekiel, and these passages, this, this these series of verses specifically, are all about laziness. This section of the book is really all about how to navigate your way through the kind of royal court and um, dealing with the landscape of, I guess, the earthly kingdom. Um, so, as I say, these verses are about this idea of laziness, and I think as a society now, we're very much wrestling with an idea of laziness. Uh, our work lives have been transformed by the pandemic. Um, I know recently we've had a lot of politicians expressing their views about how the furlough scheme, which is now coming to an end, has made a sort of a, a great part of the workforce lazy. Uh, I'm not sure, really sure that's true. I think for many people who've been on furlough, it's probably been quite a traumatizing experience in many ways. It's almost been like made been like they've been made redundant uh, without being necessarily set free. Um, and even for those who stayed in work uh, during the pandemic, it has been a, a very strange time. And I know for me personally, trying to wrestle uh, work and home life has been very difficult because for so much of the pandemic, we've been trapped in the house all together as a family and then drawing distinctions between work and life. Uh, so work life and home life has become really, really difficult. Um, and I think actually what the book of Proverbs is really saying in these sections isn't necessarily the sort of old-fashioned idea of someone who was sort of a lazy dolt. It's really about lazy thinking um, and sometimes being very quick to draw conclusions um, without necessarily always challenging our own assumptions. I think one of the verses that really leapt out at me was uh, the lazy person buries a hand in the dish and is too tired to bring it to their mouth. I don't know about you, but I feel exhausted a lot of the time. And I think we're so, we've become so addled with work that we do find it very difficult to bring the gifts of our life to our mouth to enjoy them properly and fully. Uh, and I certainly that's what Today, as I venture out, I'm going to be asking God to give me the clarity of mind to be able to enjoy the divine gifts. I'm 
Now for our prayers of intercession. So much going on in the world at the moment. No doubt there'll be things going on in your life. So well, let's have a moment to place those things before God. As your prophet Isaiah said, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you perceive it? I'm making way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. We pray for our church at this time of change. Whilst we wander through the wilderness and wasteland, wasteland let us perceive the new gifts you give us, Lord. We pray for Rob, Victoria and Amelia. May we welcome them as they join us on our journey. Together we are created. We are committed to creating something new that will enrich and challenge. We pray for our church leaders. We pray for the congregation. And we also pray for the wider community here in Carvley. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. May you te teach us to be grateful for that. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Now for the collect today. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through him who has lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now say the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, thanks ever so much for joining me this morning. Uh, I'm going to be taking a short break from morning prayer uh, after today. So, as ever, I hope you have a fabulous Wednesday. Um, thanks ever so much for sharing your prayer life with me. And I look forward to joining you again very soon. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everybody.